Roger, good morning. I guess I'm not surprised to hear you say that. Uh, we've, we've watched hearings come and go, CEO testimonies come and go. You've written books. Are we, have we really made no progress at all? No, I think we've made a lot of progress on understanding the problems, Carl. But I think if January 6th showed us anything, it's that in the United States today, you know, we are so dependent on the market to make choices and to allocate resources that we've finally run into examples of where the market is no good, right? It has not done a good job of addressing climate change. It's not done a good job of allowing the United States to address a pandemic. And it's done a horrible job of defending democracy against an insurrection. And we're at this point now where, you know, a year later, we're looking at an attack on our seat of government with essentially the entire presidential line of succession in the building. And our response to that to this point has been not terribly inspiring. We, we, we are not going after this as though we think this was a big problem. I wonder how you think about the platforms individually. I'm looking at, say, uh, a six-month or a one-year chart of Facebook versus Twitter. Why do you think the yeah. disparity between the two? Why has Meta outperformed? Well, I, I think that they've got a better business. You know, in a world without constraints, which is what we live in today, Facebook or Meta has a business that is unique in the marketplace because it's got three billion people on one giant network without any safety nets, without any guardrails. And the result of that is that they have built a massive ecosystem that doesn't just include in legitimate businesses, it includes a lot of illegitimate businesses, scams and the like. And you know, it has become fundamental to that kind of dark side of the economy. And without any regulatory interference, that's just a great business, and they're going to continue to grow by using data to exploit human weakness. And, you know, they've got the formula worked out. And so long as the government doesn't protect the citizenry, it's going to be a great business. Mm. Roger, I am curious what you think about the sell-off we have seen in recent days in tech and growth more broadly, including some of these mega cap names, whether that's something that's going to be sustained as the Fed goes into this tightening cycle in a more aggressive way, potentially, uh, or whether these are names that are just, in a sense, too big to fail for them from the market standpoint. And given the fact that they do continue to grow so strongly, uh, we'll have another strong year. Yeah, Morgan, I don't really understand how the Fed's actions are going to affect the market from here. Because quite clearly, there are giant cross-sections of the market. And I would think about private equity in particular, but also the hedge fund business, where rates that are about zero have been fundamental to growing the business. And so if rates are going to go up, if the Fed is going to stop buying bad paper and supporting the private equity market that way, then clearly the level of speculation is going to have to come down. So that makes a ton of sense to me. But at the same time, in the absence of regulation, these people still have great businesses. So I, I really don't know which way this is going to come down. My expectation is that we're just going to continue going along like this until eventually all of the speculation that's going on in all these different sectors runs out of new buyers, and then it eventually comes tumbling down. But when that will be, I have no idea.